Christina here from Sheridan Art and Designs. And today I wanna to talk to you about uh, my first steps once I bring that pattern home. So you've gone to the store, you've found the pattern, um, or it's come in the mail, you've bought that perfect cosplay pattern. And for our top five tips on how to buy the perfect pattern for you, watch our other video, I'll link it up here for you. Um, but let's say you bought the perfect pattern and now you have it and now you're staring at it going, where do I even start? So I'll walk you through where I start on every pattern that we're starting um, on a project or to modify. These is, this is my first step either way. So the first thing I do is I go into this pattern envelope and I pull out the instruction sheet that comes in the envelope. And the rest of the envelope you can just set aside for now. We're just gonna work with the instruction sheet for now. So uh, somewhere on this instruction sheet, there will be a picture of the finished product, much like the front of the envelope, there should be a picture. And then there should also be a diagram of some kind that lays out all the pattern pieces. So what they look like flat. Um, each piece should be numbered and then there should be a little list of what their names are. So I start out on this little picture here. And if I know that we're going to do modifications, I look at, first I look at which view I'm going to do. Um, for like hook right here behind me, uh, we used view B with a few modifications. So then I actually take a pencil and I lay out, I lay this out and I actually write on here what those modifications are going to be. So all I'm looking for now, I'm not thinking about um, how I'm going to do it on the actual pattern piece. I'm just thinking about how does this look now? What do I need to add or subtract to it to make it look how I want it to look? So you can see, uh, I wrote, we'll pop this up on the screen for you, but I wrote, um, I need to add buttons and loops, okay? Um, because I knew the closure on the front of his shirt had buttons and not laces. So that is also why on this list you see a minus laces. Um, so, so I just wrote that down. Um, I knew I wanted to round out the hem a little bit. I didn't want it to be perfectly straight. So I wrote plus round hem. Um, I wrote plus slim sleeves. Uh, so I knew I was gonna have to wear a coat over this. Uh, so I didn't want really puffy sleeves um, so that it got all caught. I really hate when things like bunch up in your armpit when you're wearing a coat. So I wanted to slim the sleeves out a little bit just so we didn't have all that extra fabric. Also, it would give it a slightly more feminine look if the sleeves weren't quite as big. Uh, and then I knew I wanted uh, ruffle cuffs on this too. Luckily, in this pattern, there was another view that already had the ruffle cuffs. So I literally drew a circle and, and an arrow that reminded me, take the ruffle cuffs from this one and put it on there. Um, and then I also wrote uh, a higher side slit. So the, the side of this shirt is open a little bit. And I knew I just wanted to take that up a little higher so that it fit uh, my hips a little bit better. So then after I have my, my little list of like, these are things I wanna either take away or add. And I literally write a plus or a minus next to those things. I go down to that diagram with all the flat pieces on it. And I look at the list of pieces that are in the pattern and I try to decide, do I need that piece? Do I not need that piece, right? So number one is the front piece. Obviously we need that piece. And then number two is the back piece. Yep, again, we're gonna take it. Um, number three says neck facing A. Now I know I'm doing view B, so I don't need that. I literally write an X next to it, so I don't even cut it out. Uh, number four, front ruffle for view C and D. I didn't want the front ruffle on this shirt. Drew an X next to that. Number five is the front band front band was that piece that they put the laces on, but I knew I, even though I knew I was taking laces away, I knew I was putting something there. So I did do the front uh, band just because uh, it reinforces that section for you to close it there. So we cut that out. Uh, collar for views B, C, and D. We want the collar, cut that out. Sleeve, number seven. I knew I wanted a sleeve, so <laughs> I cut that out as well. Uh, number eight is the cuff for A, B, and C. I didn't want the cuff on B. Remember, I wanted the cuff from D. I wanted the frilly cuff. So I drew an X next to that and instead left sleeve ruffle D, which is number nine, and then number 10 for the cuff, which is that band just above the, the frill on the, on the collar. Sorry, on the cuff. 
so after I know which pieces I need, and if you have any questions about what those pieces are, read through your instructions and it'll, and it'll tell you like, okay, I don't know what a front band is. You can read through the instructions of the pattern and it'll kind of tell you where you're attaching that, where it's going. So it kind of makes sense. It will make more sense um, what that piece is for. And then you can make the decision about whether or not you need that piece. Now, as I go back to my, my list, now that I know what pieces I need, I look at some of the changes that I wanted to make. And I remember that I wanted to slim the sleeves. That means that I'm going to have to make some adjustments to that sleeve piece, number seven. So I'm going to, when I get that either traced out or cut out, um, I'm going to set that aside because I know I have to make changes to that. And then um, everything else on here can pretty much go uh, directly from the pattern because a lot of the changes we're making to this piece for this particular piece are just cosmetic. Uh, for instance, not putting the laces in, putting buttons on, um, not uh, doing a straight hem, doing a round hem, uh, bringing those side slits up. Those are all things that happen as you're constructing the piece. Um, so the pattern pieces can stay the same shape. So then what I do after I know, okay, these are the pieces that I know I'm going to need to modify. These are the pieces that I know can stay pretty much the same. Then I'm ready to pull out all the pieces from your envelope. Now I'll share with you. I really advocate, uh, tracing your patterns. And I can tell, I, I'll tell you why. This particular pattern is actually 16 years old. I made this piece, this shirt, um, the shirt that's sitting right here actually, uh, for my now husband to wear to a Renaissance fair 16 years ago. So save your patterns. And unfortunately I did cut this piece out, but fortunately uh, I needed sizes now that were smaller. So I still had the, those lines but it just happened to work out. But you never know when you might want to remake a pattern or change it for something else. So I really advocate getting some tracing paper, getting some tissue paper, and instead of cutting the actual pattern piece, trace it out and then cut that out because then you always have your starting point, right? You always have this pattern and you always have the original and then you can change it to be whatever you want. So once, when I do that, I'll show you my, my little method here. I take a zip top bag, and I write on here, okay, this is the cosplay it's for. Uh, this is the pattern that I used. Um, and I take the pattern number, you know, brand and pattern number off the front of the envelope and I write it down. And then I write in parentheses what size I used for this pattern. So what, even if you're making modifications, when you're tracing the line on the pattern, what size did you use, right? Just so you know where your starting point was. And then I wrote size and then Christina because I knew I was gonna make this to fit me. So even though I'm cutting a size small to begin with, I'm going to actually have it sized to fit me. So if there are other changes or things we brought in or let out, that'll fit me. Um, we're also using this same pattern for the Rumpelstiltskin um, cosplay we're making next, uh, which is going to fit my brother Brian. So it's size Brian. And I used the medium size on this pattern. You can see I cut it out in the medium. So. You never know when you reuse a pattern, but this is my little method of remembering, okay, this is the pattern that I used and this is the, um, the size that I started with. You can always stick your pattern in these envelopes or you can put those patterns away somewhere else once you're done with it and then save these somewhere else. That way you don't have to have all your patterns in the piece. You can reuse your patterns for something else if that's easier access for you or just stick the whole you know, pattern in this in this bag and then you have your modified pieces and your original pieces all in one place. So that's where I start. Now that you have um, your perfect pattern, this is where I start. Just pull it out and start making notes on it and this will get you to a good jumping off point that you can then go research or go try out the modifications that you know you need to make. Uh, I hope this was super helpful guys. Uh, I'll see you next week and see you in the comments.